Okay, World History Class, this is part two. So I figured out how to turn the camera around. Probably half the class right now, Patrick Riley especially, is probably saying, you, you could turn it around, there's no problem. That was, would have been easy, but um, I couldn't figure it out, but I could once I turned around. So I, sorry, once I turned it off and restarted. So anyway, there's there's your diagram, right? Do you have these, these sticks of dynamites with MAIM? Okay, so here's what was going on. In the world around the around in the 1890s in particular, the world was changing rapidly, and there was a lot of industrialization going on. I'm a, there was industrialization going on. There was um, there was new uh, there was a lot of new patents being uh, created and a lot of new inventions. A lot of those new inventions were um, were um, weapons, and there, there was and there and the, well, I'm I'm kind of getting ahead of myself right now. So let's go ahead and go through this diagram. So. You've got the M. So here's what I like. I'm not even going to write down. I want you to write down. The M st stands for militarism. Militarism. Kind of like military. Military. Drop the Y and add ism. Militarism. So um, these are the causes of World War I. So the first one, militarism, <coughs> what that's referring to is that the countries of the, Euro of, uh, the world, but in particular Europe, but U.S. also, um, were busy uh, building up their military, and um, all these new weapons uh, were um, being bought up by countries and developed by countries. And also, as countries, you know, started acquiring all these new weapons, they also started building them their militaries. And um, so, you know, if you're let's say Austria-Hungary and you're right next door to Germany. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you have enough weapons, that your weapons are, are sufficiently uh, going to take care of a potential invasion. So this was, this was going on. This is a force that was going on in the world. I, I had it, have it represented as dynamite because it's like ready to blow up. It just needed a spark. We'll go over that in a minute. The next one, A, alliances. So on your notes, write in alliances. You can write it up here if you want or you, down below. That's okay. So another force that was going on around the turn of the 20th century were these systems, uh, these, um, uh, not systems, um, but these, uh, these th this alliance system. Yeah, that's it. So alliances were being built. And one of them was called the triple, um, let me say, triple alliance, triple entente. I was getting flip-flopped in my mind. But um, one of them was called, well, let's just go ahead and call them by their more common name, Central Powers and the Allies. So in your notes, write down alliances for sure, but also write down um, two alliances. One was called the Central Powers, and I'll tell you what they were in a minute. And the other one's called the Allies, and I'll tell you what that is in a minute. So the Central Powers. Who that was, was the, if you look on a map of Europe, they're right in the middle of Europe, in the center of Europe. And um, that was Germany, Austria-Hungary, which was one country, and uh, Italy. And uh, so these countries were... Um, were aggressive, kind of aggressively trying to expand their borders and get bigger, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, Germany in particular had this leader, and might as well write his name down, Kaiser Wilhelm, Wilhelm as I was pronounced, but Kaiser, K-A-I-S-E-R, Wilhelm, W-I-L-H-E-L-M, Wilhelm. And he in particular was really an aggressive leader trying to expand borders, trying to, um, you know, strengthen Germany. But keep in mind, Germany was a brand new country. It was like, what, 40 or so years old in, uh, in the, around the turn of the century. Okay, that's alliances. Oh, and then the allies were uh, Russia, Great Britain, France, and later it was U.S. U.S. came later, but we'll, we'll get into that. So uh, Russia, Great Britain, and France. And we'll also talk about Italy in a minute. Okay, so the system of alliances. Now, see, here's the thing. Here's the problem. The good thing about it is they were defensive alliances. They were formed because they countries wanted strength. Kind of uh, sometimes it's used as a gang analogy. You know, these people uh, countries join these alliances so they could uh, protect themselves from their from their enemies. But that's so. I guess that's a natural thing. However, the bad thing there is a um, an injury to one or some sort of an attack on one was considered an attack on all. And so a little small incident, we'll talk about this spark here in a minute, a little small in incident can create a much larger world conflict. Okay, so militarism, 
alliances, imperialism. Um, now, one thing we didn't really, uh, you looked at in the book in chapter 28, um, but I guess we didn't get much of a chance to talk about it, thanks to coronavirus. But imperialism is when one country tries to rule over another country for various reasons. Usually the reason is to strengthen itself. In other words, to uh, enrich its economy or to take over the uh, natural resources of that country. And this had been going on since the 1880s and for sure in the 1890s, big time in the 1890s. Um, like uh, Great Britain and France pretty much took over all of um, Africa in the 1890s and created these colonies and kind of enslaved Africans to, to, to th do things like bring rubber and cocoa and um, gold and things like that, iron. Um, and, um, and also it was for prestige. Uh, countries got into it for prestige. Germany got into it and U.S. got into it. U.S., uh, kind of a minor player, but U.S. was uh, also involved in imperialism. So what this is referring to is that the countries of Europe and eventually the U.S., we're all in, in competition against each other for more strengths and more, um, more power, world power, okay? So M-A-I-N, nationalism. So the last word, nationalism, we, we, we've used that term a lot in class. We know what it is. It's basically the pride in nation, which is a good thing. I mean, it's good to have nationalism. But what was going on, though, was that these countries, most of the countries in Europe, hadn't really developed so much of a national identity until maybe the late 1800s. Um, they thought of themselves more as regions or as, um, you know, different. Uh, they didn't really see themselves as a national entity like Italian or French. Um, but by 1900, they for sure did. In fact, the, the first Olympics, the, the modern Olympics, started in 1896. But um, so by 18, by, I'm sorry, by 1914, that's the year the war started, uh, these uh, people of Europe were eager to show, really eager to show who was best, who was strongest. And in their minds, they had these old, these, the mind of old, old time warfare, which is where you, you know, you shoot at each other. Yeah. And some people get hit, but a lot of people get missed. Uh, it's not, I'm not trying to glamorize it, but it, they didn't understand these new weapons and how tr horrible they were. They were, e e you know, ready to go out and show the other country who was tops, who was best. And so there was this kind of like building nationalism where they were ready to show the other countries um, their pride. Okay, so all these forces are going on. Going on. Did it have to break into anything? Eh, not really. But all it, because of this alliance system, all it really took was one incident. I bet you know what it is. And if I asked you in class, I bet you four of you, six of you would know the answer. Um, but what the spark was, and go ahead and write this in your notes, is the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. So the assassination of Franz, uh, F-R-A-N-Z, Ferdinand. Okay, Franz Ferdinand in 1914. So what, who he was, he was kind of a minor leader. I think he was the next in line in Austria-Hungary. They had just taken over Serbia. Serbia didn't want to be taken over, um, uh, it was, it was, in other words, uh, Serbia was host, hostile to this new power, Austria and Hungary. And so this guy was kind of like, a, almost like a, in line to be leader, but he wasn't a leader yet. But he, so he was assassinated. Terrible thing, bad thing. But should it have turned into a world war? Not, it really shouldn't have. It should have been some sort of local um, incident that was handled in that way. But because of this alliance system, um, one country would declare war on another. I think it was um, Austria-Hungary on Serbia, is that right? And then Serbia on Austria-Hungary, but Austria-Hungary was in league with Germany, so Germany declared war. In other words, it blossomed. And uh, so by 1914, there was this world, um, this world war. Okay, so, I'm gonna, well, I can't flip it around now. Okay, so, um, now, what are we going to write here? I think we might be going on too long. What are, what are we going to write here? Let's go ahead and write down some new weapons. So hopefully what you have here is you have the words that we, we went over, but also some other stuff. Like with nationalism, hopefully you wrote the word nationalism, but also wrote things like a um, uh, growing sense of national pride. Um, maybe even you put modern Olympics started at this time. Imperialism, countries competed with each other for overseas colonies, that kind of stuff. So hopefully you kind of fleshed it out. I always like to think of it like a skeleton. you got to add meat to it. And here, the assassination 
Um, okay, let's talk about new weapons. And again, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to write anything down. I'm going to ask you to do it. Okay, so new weapons. Okay, so I'm just going to go like this. So there was a lot of new weapons. There was things like flamethrowers, uh, tanks. First came into use in World War One. Airplanes, same thing. World War One first uh, came into use, although near the end. Um, poison gas, which was actually eventually banned uh, in in world conflicts. Hand grenades. Did I say flamethrowers? I think I said flamethrowers. So flamethrowers, hand grenades, tanks, um, airplanes. Um, okay, but there's one I left out, isn't there? The biggest one of all, the one that the game changer. And the game changer was, you can write on your notes right now. Do you have it? Machine gun. Machine gun was so much more uh, powerful than a, than a standard rifle. And even, and rifles had been improving. Like in the world uh, Civil War, I mean, if you shot at a guy 20 yards away and hit him, that, that was doing pretty good. But um, by 1914, or let's say 1900, rifles had, had improved quite a bit. Uh, more power, more accuracy. But, but they still couldn't shoot a whole lot. But machine guns could just spray metal. And if you had a bunch of machine gunners uh, up, up on the top of a ridge, you could just take out a whole army in minutes. So what? So this new weapon in particular, all the weapons, but especially um, machine guns, meant that they now had to fight in trenches. So the majority of uh, World War I was fought in trenches. Okay, so I'm looking at the book here. Um, Okay, so they at first they called it the Great War. It wasn't until after World War II they started calling it World War I. And at first it was a stalemate. Actually, the majority of the war was stalemate. There wasn't a whole lot of um, land exchanged hands because uh, they just waited in these uh, trenches the whole time. And eventually um, they would wait the other army out or maybe the other, arm, the other, the other army would go over the, the, um, over the top and get s stuck in the middle. They call it no man's land for a good reason. Um, and so eventually the U.S. got involved. And the U.S. got involved for several reasons. Uh, one of them, the, the main reason though, was um, Germany had been sinking um, ships and, um, and they sank uh, a ship with Americans aboard called Lusitania. They promised they wouldn't do it again. They did it again. So eventually, uh, in fact it was April of 1917, the U.S. entered the war. Was it prepared? Uh -uh. Horribly prepared. In fact, the um, they should have followed the Boy Scouts, which started about the same time. The Boy Scouts' motto is called "Be Prepared." They should have they should have followed that. But anyway, they weren't re weren't really prepared. So, but the truth is, though, when the when the U.S. troops got over there, they called them doughboys. They did have an, they did have an effect, and the effect was that they're fresh. They um, hadn't been sitting in trenches for two and a half or three years, and they started to turn the tide of war. So I'm kind of I'm kind of going over the battles. The battles aren't really in the standards, although there are some pretty tra tragic ones. Um, okay, so in 19 oh yeah, on the what hour of what month of well, uh, okay. Anyway, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 1918, um, uh, a ceasefire was called. So November 11th, 1918, a ceasefire was called. Which, by the way, is uh, is that Veterans Day? No, that's not Veterans Day. That's uh, that's Veterans Day. Yeah. Um, used to call it Armistice Day. So anyway, um, so the war's over. Uh huh. Woo -hoo. But what what didn't happen yet was the Peace Conference of Versailles. So I think being I think this video might be too long at this point. So I'm not going to go over the Peace uh, Conference of Versailles. But let me just kind of like summarize it really quickly. Versailles, by the way, is. V E R S A I L L E S. Doesn't sound right. I mean, that is the way to spell it, but it doesn't sound like it's like it's spelled. V E R S A I L L E S. Um, so um, it was flawed, and the reason why is there was four nations there. Three of them wanted revenge. Italy, France, Great Britain wanted revenge on Germany for starting this war, and so they made these really harsh. Um, Resolutions. The main one, though, was war, the War Reparations uh, Clause, which charged Germany with having to pay for everything, war reparations, <coughs> which uh, Germany couldn't do. Uh, the U.S. President, uh, Woodrow Wilson, tried to get them to agree to a peace, um, a, um, a peace settlement, 
and called the Treaty of Versailles, and there was 14 points to it, so it was called the 14 points. And most of the 14 points kind of got negotiated away, and so, but Wilson was really hard on the last one, the 14th one, which is the creation of a League of Nations. You ever hear of it? Didn't last. They created it, but the U.S. didn't join because the U.S. Um, and the U.S., uh, there was a debate in Congress. Imagine that. Uh, Congress couldn't agree to it. And many in Congress, uh, Republicans in Congress, felt that it would have kind of bound Americans hand, America's hands too much. Democrats felt that they would be, it would be a peace, uh, a, um, a lasting peace. Um, but so the tragedy of World War I is that it really didn't stop all future wars. In fact, only 25 years later, World War II broke out. Okay? So I, what I would like you to do, I'm going to put this in writing as well, but I'd like you to go ahead and take a picture of your notes. And probably you have the dynamite. You probably have to talk about the new weapons. Probably you talked about the U.S. joining in 1917. Probably you talked about the Treaty of Versailles, which was flawed. It really didn't stop war to end all wars. Okay, and I'd like, to take you, I'd like you to take a photo of that and then uh, put it in Google Classroom. I'll put this in Google Classroom. Okay, so you want to tour this place? All right. So, again, I'll have to turn around. Um, I just bought this warehouse in October, and I eventually want to live here. But at this point, it's just a warehouse. And it's kind of junky right now because I've got all kinds of paddle boards. I just got two shipments in. In fact, oh, I forgot to show you this. These are the Chinese boards. Oh, I don't have any out right now. Uh, these, China, these are the Chinese boards right here. These boards, uh, here's one right here. Here's two right here, are actually French. Oh, wait. I got to turn the wrong way. I'm sorry, guys. These are the French boards. These are the Chinese boards. No, over there. These are the Chinese boards. Um, anyway, this is the warehouse. And I'll just give you a quick one. It's 1,000 square feet. It's, they call it a pole building because they make it with these poles. Uh, where's, yeah, like this pole right here. They sit in the ground and they pour concrete. And then there's metal on the outside. And eventually I want to build this into uh, two rooms and then the, the bedroom up on top. Would that be cool? So like I'm thinking here, bathroom, washroom for washer, dryers, uh, closet, that kind of stuff. And here, kitchen. And right here, steps to go up to to uh, up to the uh, loft up there anyway and uh, here i'll give you a quick tour out here here it is wow got overcast as i was talking there we go there's the warehouse so hang in there you guys i remember um take a picture of your notes and send them to me take it easy